This is Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Cones on the Hogstein Network. Welcome to Seasons of Discontent, Season 4, Episode 14, brought to you by Rick Snyder's Washington on Twitter, Facebook, and all the other social medias. I'm Rick Snyder. And I'm Matt. And we're back discussing all things sports and life in Washington as part of the mighty Hogstein Network on audio and YouTube channel on video. So, all right, Matt, they came, the NFL came out and said, all right, dear players and staff, half of you have been vaccinated for the COVID, about half of you haven't. And you're talking a lot of trash. You don't want to do it. So, okay, here's our new guidelines when we start training camp. Those of you who have been vaccinated, the world is your oyster. Go enjoy life. Those of you who haven't been vaccinated, uh, we're putting you in prison and you're going to cry every day because we're screwing you until you get the vaccination. Mm. That's basically the bottom line. I was really surprised how draconian they got. You can still practice together, but you can't use the hot tub, can't use the weight room. Can't, you got to do all, you're an outcast. Yeah, and they're going to just say, you guys are being stupid. Just take the shot and let's move on. You know, and the NFL did a great job last year of staying alive when nobody thought they could do it. So these draconian measures. Hey, I don't know if you got some religious reason against shots. Oh, I'm, OK, but other than that, people are just being distrustful and you got to trust the science. That's what we're doing. We're emerged, man. It's, it's great out there now. Well, and I noticed, you know, a lot Montez sweat. We didn't talk about the Montez sweat comments, but, you know, m- m- obviously Montez handled the question wrong. I would say, you know, his his response was wrong. He should have just come out and said, look, you know, I had a heart condition in college. I mean, you know, and, and there have been studies that certain versions of the covid shot have affected people's hearts. You know, that would be the more responsible thing for him to say. So I could understand a guy like Montez Sweat not wanting to get the shot. But, you know, Cole Beasley coming out and saying, if you force me to get the shot, I'm going to retire. I mean, come on, dude, just, you know, this is your livelihood. This is your job. You know, you know, make the make the sacrifice that you need to make, Um, you know, and it's not like me or you going to get the shot. This is, you know, these are professional football players making millions of dollars. You know, I'm just a Joe Blow going to a job every day that, you know, I've been going to since the beginning of COVID. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, I kind of I, I guess I have two questions for this. Where is the players union's stance on this? And, you know, the, is the NFL going to the extreme to almost force these guys to get the shot? They are pretty much forcing them um, by doing these measures. I mean, it, you really got to stand tough against this. And is it worth it? I don't right. think so. And Montez, I understand that point. You know, I had a big heart attack. I had open heart surgery years ago. And I, you know, I talked about it with my doctor too about, dude, am I going to drop dead in two years or something, you know, and you're going to say sorry? Right. (laughs) You know, I I thought the risk was worth it. So I did it. But that's, I don't know Montez's exact thing with his heart, but if he's playing in the NFL, I'm guessing he's okay. If you're a pregnant woman, I could see you not wanting to do it too. Right. So there are exceptions to this. You know, we're up to about two thirds of the American public. So we're getting there. But the NFL, man, they're, they're just knuckling people on this. The other thing it's going to affect is training camps for the public. <clears throat> you know, Washington only has four days of training camp open to the public in Richmond. And you say, OK, it's a great place. The fans interact. You get all. The, well, under the new rules, you can't do autographs. You can't do pictures. You can't get within 10 feet of players. And that's just it. I mean, it's, you know, nobody likes this at all. But you're just going to have, you know, that's not going to be a good year for this. Uh, you know, for media, I can, they're now finally going to bring people to podiums out, so outdoors. I never was inside a locker room and training camp ever because there's no room. You know, we right. always had to when you have 90 people in there. Um, so at least we're getting to finally, you know, say, hey, Ron, over here, it's me. You know, and I, oh, I saw you on Zoom. I mean, that's finally going to change. But I'm sorry for, for people if you want to go see practice go see practice but but you're not going to be able to do that yeah i just um, realized that you've never actually spoke with ron rivera face to face yet have you no i have once when he was hired oh that was, okay yeah because it was pre-covid yeah so that was yeah but since then no nobody has he hasn't Crazy. really anything 
um, since then. So it's going to be, I bet it's going to be funny for him too. Like, I see you on TV. I see you on TV. I mean, you know, it's like Fozzie going, you're on TV. So, mm -hmm. You know, those kind of crazy things. Uh, I was at FedEx Field doing something this past week, and I put up pictures on Twitter. They're, they're basically bulldozed the field. They're about done with it as far as bull taking the stripping it off. Lots of sand, man, piled up. They're going to get rid of that sand because obviously it didn't work. They're bringing in new, better sand. I don't know why, but okay. Drainage. They're gonna it's all for drainage. Yeah, so you got two months till the first preseason game, and they got lots of work to do. But uh, I noticed the seats all still had twist ties on them where you couldn't pull them down. So uh, they got a lot of work to do over at FedEx Field, but they are doing it. Um, they say it's the same field as they're using in Ashburn for the practice fields. Those have looked good. You know, so far they're not getting tore up. Uh, I don't know the big difference. They've never been able to grow grass at, at FedEx Field. Uh, can't win, can't grow grass. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's called it's a haunted field. That's why. <laughs> I guess, man. Well, I have a friend as a cop who swears that there are, there was a, a body dumping ground way back in the day, you know, for hits. And uh, he swears there's dead bodies under there, but he's crazy anyway. I don't know uh on that i yeah, know he just, and jimmy hoffa was in old giant stadium right that's what they say in the concrete or something they uh, they, they look for it they couldn't find him yeah i don't know <laughs> i don't want to know any of these things i know exactly but you know fedex field is they're making the move it's hopefully it's going to be nice i mean i thought the field looked okay last year uh but you know once you're down on it you see how different it is it can be really spongy and it's hard to grab your footing uh, that you can't see from the stands or TV. Right. So, pressing on that. Uh, oh, okay. Wizards. They finally got rid of Scotty Brooks. I have to admit, I was a little surprised. His contract expired, so it's not a firing. It right. just didn't. He said, he, you know, they couldn't agree on a contract extension. I felt like saying, yeah, that's happened to me too. I wanted to stay and they didn't want me to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, the longer it went on, I figured the more he was likely to stay. And me too. Me too. And I, you know, they had a little bit of a nice late season run before they got whacked in the playoffs. Yeah. But I think they can do better. You know, Sam Cassell's name comes up a lot, but I have a feeling Sam Cassell is going to get a better deal elsewhere. Wes Unseld's son. Uh, gosh, I remember that kid in the locker room. I'm really going to hate this, but he's become a pretty good, well known assistant coach. At least two other teams are going to interview him, I hear. Uh, so maybe Un Unsell was the best player ever, his father, ever in franchise history, but he was a lousy coach and GM. So the kid wasn't much of a player, so maybe he'll be a great coach and GM or something. Man, you're just screwed every team you look at in the, in the league, in our area. You got Scott Turner running the offense of the Washington football team. Now maybe Unsell's kid's going to be the head coach of the Wiz. You're just getting yeah. old, Rick. <laughs> Yeah, I, maybe I'll stick around and see Obi's boys playing. You know, yeah, I mean, he's already – if you watch uh, Instagram videos, Obi posts, he's learning how to play hockey. Yeah, yeah, he's missing teeth already, so, you know. He's yeah, awesome. exactly. But uh, going back to the Wizards coaching search, I feel like – obviously, look, we, we have to look at it this way. The Wizards are not a top team in the NBA. I mean, we just aren't. Um does that – is there a way – I mean, Scott Brooks was a pretty big name when he was brought here. I mean, obviously what he did in Oklahoma City, but, you know, having uh, Harden and Durant and Westbrook, I mean, that that's a that's a pretty formidable lineup back then. But um, I don't know if they're going to get someone that's top tier. You know, it's just – is this an attractive place to coach? You have two stars, but what do you have around them? I mean, you have – Bertans, who they gave a big contract to, but he's off the bench. I mean, it, it's just, it, I don't know if this is, is an attractive job. And there was a lot of openings in the NBA. I think it was like Wednesday. They made a lot of coaching changes. So um, I, I think that the Wiz need a coach that's going to bring another star here. You have to build a legit big three to contend with the Lakers. And you see what Philadelphia is doing. And you, well, I mean, the Nets got bounced last night. They have a big three. You know, you have to follow that model of the big three and then fill out the rest of the team. You know, uh, I don't know. And I don't know if Leonsis is willing to do that. You know, I mean, we've always heard that, you know, Leonsis is in the background and he's more hands on with the with the basketball team than he is with the hockey team. So, you know, is is 
is the GM in full control or does, you know, is it kind of Leones us in the background pulling the strings? Yeah. I mean, maybe it's time to try and ramp up your whiz team because your caps team starting to, you know, get old. Yeah. I, that. But I, you know, Tommy Shepard talked to reporters and he basically said, you know, we're not in a big hurry. We are the nation's capital. We're an attractive spot. Okay. Versus Timbuktu. Sure. I give you that. Yeah. But, okay. DC is better than Minnesota. Yeah. We'll say that because <laughs> yeah. the Timberwolves have stunk for 20 years. But you know, the thing is these coaches, they're not going down to Smithsonian's and all that stuff. Well, Scotty Brooks did, but uh, most of the time they're just worried about the sports. They're traveling half the time. It's not the same thing. Now, it's better than living in Green Bay, I think, in the winter. Yeah. But but I thought that's kind of a more of an arrogant position than I would be. I'd be parked out at your leading candidates right now. Let's make a deal now. Sort of like Dan Snyder does when he brings in free agents. Yeah. It's like, what got to do to get you to take this deal before you, <laughs> before you leave? Well, and also you have to consider, look at what Leonsis did. Leonsis doesn't like to pay coaches. Look at Barry Trotz. Barry Trotz is in the East Finals right now with the Islanders. The Caps haven't been out of the first round for the past three years since he left. You know, he doesn't like to pay the coach. So are you going to get an attractive guy or a, a top-tier coach, A, not willing to pay, B, having a team that's kind of mediocre minus Westbrook and Beal? You know, I mean, I, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, maybe they luck box their way into getting like unsells kid because of the ties to the wizard slash bullets from his father. I don't know. Yeah, they're, I think they're a 500 ish team. It'd be a little bit above 500. Not sure more up and bad. I don't know. All I know is Ted's got some money because I tried to buy Eagles tickets this week. Uh, the Eagles are coming end of August and 100 bucks for the cheapest ones. Uh, 600 to 1500 on the floor. So I'm not going to be at the Eagles concert. And, and for you young kids, that's the band, the Eagles, not yeah. the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whatever. All right. We got to run. I'm Rick Snyder. And I'm Matt. I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks for listening to Seasons of Discontent on the Hogstye Network.